So in the recent Bathurst 1000, you may have seen this pass where the Red Bull and the Monster cars got past the Penrite and you thought, oh, well, that's pretty easily explained. The Red Bull came up behind at speed and then just gave the Monster a bit of a push and that was it. Well, there's actually a little bit more to it than that and it's to do with aerodynamics. So first, let's take a look at that pass. So we've got the Red Bull car suddenly approaching from behind. Where did it get that speed from? We'll find out in a moment. When it gets right behind the monster, they both speed up. So let's understand what's happening. So to explain what's going on, let's take a look at one car by itself. Now, I'm gonna talk a bit about aerodynamics. I don't have a really good modeling tool for this, so this is gonna be basic, but hopefully you should get the point across. This is airflow here, and it flows up over the car and it ends up in this dirty, horrible mess at the back of the car. And that produces two types of drag, or two areas of drag. One, the car has to punch through the air. Now this is pretty similar to a to you swimming or moving through water, moving out of the way. You know that creates drag. Well, the same things happen with air, but because we are so used to moving through air, we don't really feel it. If you do that fast enough, of course you'll feel it. And, and if you stick your hand out a, a car window, then you'll start to appreciate the power of air. So that's the first type of, of drag. The second type of drag is, is less obvious. And when that air ends up in this dirty sort of tumbled um, area of air at the back, that's an area of low pressure and low pressure in effect sucks. So it creates a kind of suction effect which you can think of as sucking the car backwards. So there's two types of, of drag here in a single car by itself. So Let's look at what a perfect shape would be, and this is pretty much aerodynamically perfect. Now if I put my same two lines around it, you can see that because this is so streamlined and it's tapered off, then we don't get this sort of turbulent air at the back, and that's why this shape here is much less draggy than this shape over here. And if you look at things which are highly streamlined, um, fish for example, even though that's in water, and vehicles such as um, uh, electric vehicles is an example, they tend to be quite streamlined at the back and also solar powered vehicles, that's the ideal shape, which is not that of a, of a racing car, at least not a supercar anyway. So what's going on when, when two vehicles are close together? Well, this is essentially what happens and we noticed there that that's a bit different from the previous line because the airflow comes up and it doesn't end up, or well not exactly end up, in a tangled heap here, it ends up in a tangled heap here. So the result of that is that this first car obviously doesn't need to punch through the air to the extent that the, um, sorry, the, the rear car doesn't need to punch through the air to the extent that the first car does because the first car is moving that air out the way. So advantage is to the second car, which is pretty obvious, right? I mean, um, I think everyone can figure that out. But what's not so obvious is that the suction area here is reduced and therefore the front car gets an advantage as well. So what happens is you get a drag reduction for both the front and the rear cars, which is pretty amazing. And that's why combined, they can actually both go faster. Now this works even better for multiple cars. If you've got five or six in a row or three or four in a row, they all get a benefit. This guy gets a benefit and that one gets a benefit and certainly all the ones in the middle as well. And then you can speed up and bump each other along a bit, which is what you saw happen um, in that pass. Now, we should say that this doesn't um, work effectively when you come to break for a corner or go around a corner. And the reason for that is that's when you want a lot of drag when you're slowing down for a corner, because the more drag you can put on a car, the quicker it slows down, the later you can break and the quicker your lap time will be. And then when you're going around the corner, what you want is nice fresh air over the car because you want the maximum amount of downforce pressing it down into the ground. And once you've got around a corner at, and to the point where where you're accelerating down the straight, that's when you want, you want to switch off the drag and that's where this sort of thing works. So the pass we saw there was on a, um, a really long straight for a reason, because it was, and the faster you go, the greater the effect. And obviously the longer the straight, the more time you've got to be able to pull it off. So hopefully that explains a little bit about that pass, more interesting than perhaps it seemed at, at first uh, glance. If you've got any questions, please use the comment section and thank you for watching.